Okay, welcome everyone to Friday Get Together Lunch, formerly known as Ladies Lunch, but everybody is welcome. And today we are honoured to have time with Julie McDonald. Over the last few years, I've had the pleasure of getting to know you. And uh, what I've learned is that Julie has a great sense of humour. Uh, <laughs> she obviously has determination and, uh, and dedication to have the medals and the Olympic medals that she has earned. We look forward to hearing about that. And uh, now you're on to also sharing your story through inspirational speaking as well. So um, one new thing that I learned about Julie, which is trivial to this, but she is a butterfly mama. She cares for caterpillars <laughs> until they are reborn. And I think that is a beautiful analogy to what we're going to hear today from you, Julie, and uh, your journey and how it came to, to a seer. So why don't we start with uh, where you got started and um, where it all happened for you from being an athlete? Sure. So uh, I went to two Olympics and two Commonwealth Games for Australia, uh, amongst other international meets. I medalled at both Olympics and Commonwealth Games. And I, um, I guess I swam because I loved it. Uh, we lived on the south side of Brisbane and we would go to the Gold Coast a lot for, um, you know, swimming and mum wanted, mum wanted us to all to be strong swimmers. So she put us in the pool and I just took off. I just really enjoyed it. Um, I loved the whole, you know, team uh, perspective and, and going and having a good time at training and, uh, you know, having a good chat, which I was always good at. Um, <laughs> so I just progressed through the ranks. I had a very supportive teacher at school who encouraged me to go to zone carnivals and, um, you know, progress through state titles. And it wasn't until, I guess, after the 84 Olympics that, I, you know, really sort of put my head down, bum up, so to speak, and really committed myself to want to train for the Olympics. Uh, our squad had seven Olympians go to the LA Olympics. Wow. And I just was super inspired from that. John Sieben won a gold medal. And it was his race that really, uh, you know, for me, I watched that race, I cheered. And when he touched that wall, I turned around to my mum and I said, I want to go to the next Olympics. So, um, I've uh, so from there I just you know really committed to myself to training I was training um, uh, um, 11 sessions a week uh, swimming between 80 to 100 kilometers a week and then 15 months later or 18 months later made my first Commonwealth Games team so um, you know it was pretty quick I guess from that perspective uh, and you know I just sort of always set that goal of wanting to win medals for us, our squad, I trained with Laurie Lawrence. And for those of you who know Laurie Lawrence, um, he is a lunatic. And mm -hmm. however, he was the best lunatic for me <laughs> because, you know, I was that kid that wasn't the most talented, but I really had to work hard to get what mm -hmm. I, um, you know, all the medals that I got. So for me, that worked out really well. And yeah, we just, um, you know, and with Laurie, it's all about, you know, winning medals. So that was embedded into us. So we didn't, once we made the Australian team, that wasn't enough. We had to go and, and win medals. So, you know, and now looking back on it, I, you know, very grateful for that. That's incredible. That's incredible. What an amazing feat to be able to swim, you know, 80 to 100 kilometres a week. The dedication that that takes to get up out of bed each morning and do that. Yep. And, um, yeah, I think... I think um, I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about um, your ASEA journey in a moment and how that relates to that, um, that dedication that comes, comes through. Uh, I understand that you've had some experiences, some health challenges along the way. Uh, what, what's happened there? And this is all prior to ASEA, isn't it? That you've... Um, yeah, so for my... Um, but just before my second Olympics, uh, I got an infected wisdom tooth and uh, it was going to, I was have to be out of the water for about two weeks if I got the tooth removed. So hindsight's always a good thing, right? Anyway, uh, my dentist gave me some antibiotics to kill the infection. But uh, what we didn't, he didn't tell me was that there was a possibility that bacteria would uh, poison my system. So I got to the Olympics and I was feeling tired. 
and I ended up having septicemia. So I went in ranked number one in the world, knowing I could win the gold medal, knowing that I could beat the people that were, I was racing against uh, and didn't even make finals. So um, that was sort of, I, I quit after that. I, I was pretty devastated. Had a couple of years off, uh, got back in the water uh, to train for masters. And being my competitive nature, after a couple of months, I sort of gave that the flick and thought, bugger it, I'm going for the Olympics again. So trained coaches and went and trained with a top coach here in Brisbane uh, at a pool that was uh, heavily chlorinated and I ended up with chlorine poisoning, uh, which is uh, my liver and kidney functions were um, uh, sky high uh, through the roof. And I, you know, really had, um, I, I was getting a depression and um, having some pretty bad thoughts. And so I got out of the water um, and it was the first time actually I was introduced to a network marketing product, um, which was high in antioxidants and it helped me recover very quickly so I could get back in the water. Mm. And then um, after the, and then the year later uh, in 1997, I was diagnosed with stage two melanoma. So I had um, a, a melanoma removed from my back. And uh, so that then put me on for the next 23 years up to date, uh, every six months going to a dermatologist and getting my skin checked. I've got a lot of moles. Mm. And um, so I've had uh, a couple removed that have been suspicious. Um, so I just had my skin check on Tuesday actually. And she almost put me up to nine months and then she, cause she hasn't had to burn anything off for the last few years. And, yeah. um, and you know, my skin's going really good. So, uh, she almost, she was looking at me and she was like, Oh, she said, but you do have a lot of moles on your back. So we'll just, and I said, look, I've already made my December appointment. Let's just stick to that. So, sure. Sure. um, I do that. That's, a, that's great to hear. And so the fact that you've got beautiful this skin that uh, hasn't had any issues come up in the last few years, can you, can you share how you feel that may have happened and uh, why and how were you introduced to ASEA? So I was, uh, got back into the gym, uh, probably, I was swimming, probably about eight years ago, I got back in to get fit and got back swimming and I was going to the gym and uh, about four years ago, I was doing a, a new boxing gym had opened up at here where I live and I thought this would be fun. And I was doing that. And for about six months, I was doing a push up challenge in the gym. And uh, within two days, I couldn't lift my right arm. I'd done some nerve damage to my neck and I spent the next eight months in agony trialing different physios, uh, acupuncturists, bone therapy, um, and Sally Diamond, who's a scanner therapist, uh, mm. she lives about an hour away from me. So I, you know, she's normally, you know, cause it's a fair way. I couldn't drive. Um, I couldn't dress myself. My partner had to dress me. So it was sort of, I had to wait for him to be able to drive me there. So we went to Sally and, um, we had, uh, some scanner therapy and she'd just been trialing the Renew 28 in her clinic. And she said to me, Jules, I'm not sure what this will do, but if you use it like an addict, uh, she said, can you tell me what happens? You know? So she said, I've seen incredible things happening on this testimonial page, but mm. you know, I would like some friends to give me some real evidence. So I, I grabbed six tubes and I used a tube a week on my neck. Mm -hmm. And within those six, after six weeks, I, I no longer had an issue when I lifted up my arm. Um, I was in, I had no more agony. Uh, and I was, you know, like that was really good. So then I rang her and I said, listen, you know, I'm at the time I was 46. <laughs> and I said to her, um, look, you know, over the last four years, my menstrual cycle has got a lot heavier and, um, I'm in a lot of agony the first two days. I can't leave the house. Um, will it help with that? And she said, I don't know, just rub it on your belly. So this is back in the days when we didn't have the liquid, right? So I was just rubbing. And because, because you, you only have a cycle once a month, you know, you, you, I, got, I was pretty slack. I only did it once a day. 
and, and you know of course we know a lot more now yes. but uh, when I remembered after I got out of the shower at night so I, I would rub the gel on my belly well within three months I had no more agony I could be out and about um, uh, my breast stopped aching so I never knew when my cycle was going to start mm. I could be out and about the shops and my cycle I could go to the toilet and and realize oh dear um, and, and not even know, not even be prepared. Like I, yeah. I would never know that it was coming, you know, like for all the women out there, you know, your breasts yeah. ache a couple of days before and, you know, yeah. you get, you know, a bit irritable. Well, yeah. I had nothing. Nothing, yeah. And yeah. so I was like, hey, this is good. Mm. And then uh, the liquids, we were importing the liquid from the US. Sally said, you need to get on the liquid. And so we were importing that from the US and through NFR. And uh, Sasha, my partner, he's a plasterer. So he had, um, for the last couple of years, an issue with his shoulder um, that would keep him in, in constant um, discomfort. And do we have to be compliant on this call? I better hate. Yes. And, um, <laughs> and, and issues, with his, <laughs> issues with his elbows. Sure. So front and back. So he uh, was using the gel on that as well, using a tube a week. And within yeah. eight weeks, he had resolved it. Mm. Now, his mum, uh, she is, she'd had a stroke about 12 years ago. She's on lots of medications for that. Uh, her health had been declining. And she was, every now and then, she was uh, probably every couple of weeks being taken to hospital with um, issues as a result of those medications. So we picked her up from the hospital one day and, and we um, uh, asked the doctor, is there anything we could get her off? Uh, she was on 15 medications. And he basically said she needs everything, you know, because of side effects. She needs one of the other medications, things like that. So he basically said, she's 75. She's only got another five or 10 years left in her. Why would you bother? Now, she, he said this in front of her. Yeah. So she she's grew up on a farm in China. She's Russian. She's tough. Mm. You know, she she lived in the barn when she lived in in China. You know, mm. she she um she, she's rugged, right? Mm. And she she got home. She said, "I want to give up, and um, I don't want to live anymore. I'm sick of the pain." And I'd had a tuber gel always in my bag, and she ripped her arm. She had that thin skin that would mm. tear easily. And I gave her the tube. I said, "Mum, use this twice a day." This was on the Saturday yeah. and we're going to pick her up in four days time to get some stents put in for a knee replacement. And we picked her up four days later and I said, how often did you use the gel? And she said, twice. I said, no, mum, twice a day. <laughs> anyway, the skin, the bruise had gone, yeah. a scab had formed and that gave her the confidence this works. So then she yeah. started using it as we suggested. She, we got her in the liquid. Yeah. We've now been able to get her off 14 medications over the last yeah. three years, wow. reversed her need for knee replacement <laughs> and given her a new lease on life. Wow. Apart from the anti-aging benefits that she's experienced as well. So that was our drive. That was, you know, that was when we really realised people need to know about this. Sure, sure. Isn't that amazing? That is incredible. And, I mean, that didn't happen overnight. You just said it took a few years no. to come off. Took, she had a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's taken us a long time. But During each, that, there was, there's, a list, there's a list of about 30 things that it's also helped with in that time. Yes. So she had dizziness. She had uh, ringing in her ears. She had um, a whole heap of things, right? Mm -hmm. Her skin is now thicker on her arms. She doesn't tear as easily. Yeah. Um, you know, a whole host of things. And for me, it's... You know, with my skin, mm. um, you know, rubbing the gel on twice a day on my face, if I felt a little itchy spot or um, I had something come up somewhere on my, on my body, I would just apply the gel five or six times a day to that area. Yeah. And I've had some situations where um, I've had some lumps fall out and, yes. um, and my, my dermatologist hasn't had to burn anything off my um, face or chest or anywhere and on Tuesday, you know, she always says, what's new? You know, is there anything that's come up? And I said to her, yes, I've got this thing on my chest. I said it's, um, I told her what I knew it was. 
And I said, I've been using my gel on it. And as you can see, it's about to fall off. Right. And she yeah. looked at it under her magnifying scope and everything. And, and, you know, and she just says, keep using it. Yeah, sure. Isn't that incredible? And you find that um, like now it's been, how many years have you been using the product? We've been using the product for four and a half years. Okay. And things are still coming to the surface? You're yeah. Finding that it's so drawing. constantly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when, if you've ever had a, a, um, a, a derma scan of your face where they can go down layers and layers and layers, mm. um, you know, the damage from the sun um, is, goes down, you know, a lot of layers. So it's always going to, and, you know, it's not like I'm not in the sun. So she sort of said to me, you know, if you're doing walking, wear your hat, wear sunscreen. I'm not a big fan of sunscreen yeah, because of the chemicals in it. So I'm sourcing some, maybe some natural things to be able to, you know, use that I, and maybe get better with using the, the renew on my face and um, before and after I go for a walk or whatever. Um, but, uh, oh, sorry, I've just lost track of my question. What, what would you ask? Well, oh, always coming up to coming the surface, up. right? There's always something. And I just turned 50, right? So, um, congratulations. You know, it's I amazing. Think I look all right, for 50. I'm pretty yeah, happy yeah. with the way my skin's looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that. Um, but I noticed, you know, so um, on Monday, because I had to go to the doctor and get GP and get my referral from my dermatologist, you know, I look at my doctor's. Um, my um the doctor's notes notes on me right and you look at june 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 for the last six years i only go once a year to get a referral yeah. but i had my knee started hurting on the weekend before i went and so i got him to check that out and you know i just keep rubbing the gel on and he said you know you can go to you can go to the physio and they can put some ice pack on one side and a heat pack on the other and i went why would i pay 176 dollars to go to the physio when I could just rub my gel on and it's going to do exactly the same thing. So um, I'm drinking, the question, I'm drinking uh, anywhere between 90 and 120 mils morning and night. Um, I go by my instincts. I don't, um, I had, uh, for the last three years, I've had um, that situation that women go through at around my age where you get very quite warm during the day and yeah. night and may break out in a sweat. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've, over the last three years, that's come, I've got rid of it. My cycles come back. Then almost to a year to the date, it would come, the hot flushes would come back. I resolved that my cycle had come back. Yeah. Yeah. And over the last, <laughs> the last six weeks, the six months I've had the same thing. And so I would increase my liquid. I would go 120 mils morning and night. And I found that that would reduce the symptoms. Yes. And I had, uh, and now I've just had my cycle come back again. So I'm just sort of like, whatever work, whatever oh, yeah. my body wants to do, my body wants to do. Mm -hmm. I've not gone and got tested the hormones or anything like yeah. that. I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of going to the doc. So I just sort of go, well, I'm just doing the best I can with what I've gotten. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so, it. and then the gel's always twice a day. Excellent. Okay. And I think that's what we found is just so that people, if there's anyone new on the call today, that it's really important to know that this is not a, um, a cure or a prevention for anything. And this just allows our body to be able to operate in the way that it's naturally meant to. Um, and whether it be go through that stage of life for women at the right time, there's a lot of women that are struggling at the moment that it can happen early or too late and um, very, very uncomfortably. So it's, we're finding so many women are finding that it's bringing their body back into line and, um, and doing it yeah. um, well, going through that process. In a, in That's a it. And focus. just making it, make it easy to cope, right? And mm. then, you know, like when I sort of said to my naturopath that my mm. cycle had come back, um, she goes, I've not heard of that before. And, um, mm. and if I if mentioned to my girlfriends, they go, oh, you know, good Lord. And I went, yeah. but you know what? It doesn't phase me because it's not uncomfortable anymore. Yes, you know, it. so I'm just topping yeah. up my redox supply and allowing my body to do what it needs to do. You know, I'm, yeah. um, and, and that's the way I look at it is that if I feel like I need more, I need more, you know, I had a, I had a, I got a bit of a sore throat the other week. And so I just rubbed the gel on 10 times a day on my throat and my glands 
Yeah. And, you know, the sore throat goes away. Or if I get a sniffle, I'll, you know, I'll shove the gel up my nose. Um, yeah, that's right. It's amazing, you know? isn't it? You can put it anywhere. Yeah. Exactly. You can so put it anywhere. You. Anywhere your finger can go. <laughs> thank you very much for sharing that. That is true. That's right. <laughs> oh, so, Julie, look, I think on the call today, there's um, some people that are in the athletic field. And uh, there's also possibly a variety of people that are uh, professionals that are associated mm -hmm. in that area, like coaches or, um, or, or therapists. So what benefits is there for them in utilising this technology? One, for their clients, but also for themselves. Um, as we know that those people have dedicated years to this career. And in some cases, that's all they know. And then they've maybe retired for one reason or another. And they're in a place where they need to start a new career or create an income. How has that, how do you see that with the SEER? So I, I have, um, so when I swam in the 88 Olympics, I raced against the East German women who were proven to be on steroids and they would get an increase in their VO2 max by uh, three to 4%, mm -hmm. which meant that when I got tired, they could keep going harder and stronger. They could train harder and longer, things like that. With the, um, the redox, we have um, you know, the athlete study that shows mm -hmm. that it will help an athlete recover quicker and it will help an athlete train harder, longer, naturally, with no side effects, and it's 100% safe. Mm -hmm. So do I wish this was invented in 1987? Mm -hmm. I sure do, you know. So I just see, you know, I couldn't tell you the number of times that I cried myself to sleep at night because my body was aching. And I knew that in the morning I had to get up at 4.25 and do it all again. Mm -hmm. If I can help an athlete go to bed at night feeling better, yeah. more rested and wake up rested and and feel that they can train as hard as they did the night before again the next day then they can get the most out of themselves whilst they're training mm. uh you know we know that there was a brisbane bronco using this technology for the last three years of his career uh he you know i said to him are you going to share it yes and he said no <laughs> He's not going to share it, right? Because he was at the end of his career and all the other guys were nipping at his heels for his spot. Yeah. So once he retired, he was happy then to tell people, this is what I used to help with me, with my recovery. He was telling his doctor, he showed his doctors what he was on. Of course, they had to do that. He was uh, getting drug tested uh, monthly mm -hmm. and he never failed a drug test. So we know that it's safe for athletes. We know that there's US Olympians using this technology and helping them to be able to swim faster and recover, you know, because they can train harder. Yeah. So for athletes, it is a game changer because who wouldn't want to recover quicker? Who wouldn't want to be able to get the maximum out of their career? Because these days, and you can make them maximise your career, you can make more money. And, you know, and there's a lot of competition out there. So I, I feel that if athletes aren't on this, they're not giving themselves the best opportunity. Yeah. And as therapists, you know, Sally Diamond, who toured the women's tennis professional circuit, um, she treated all the best tennis play, women tennis players in the world um, you know, she now has her pain clinic at Red, Redcliffe and she treated that Bronco um, mm -hmm. and she treats other athletes and, and, and people that are really, you know, quite ill. So for her, she says that she's able to treat or she's be, she, she can help more people with this technology that they can use it in their own home so that she doesn't have to see them as often. Now, some therapists might go, well, that's an income I'm losing. Yeah. But if they, if they get the bigger picture yeah. and they think instead of helping 100 people a week, if you could help 1,000 people a week because you've helped 10, who've yeah. helped 10, who've helped 20, who've helped 30, 
Yeah. All of a sudden you could have four or 5,000 people in your, in your organization a week yeah. that you're helping. Yes. And then you can create, create a residual income with that. Exactly. So, you know, for me, when, when Sally first mentioned, Hey, there's a business, I was like, I'm not interested mm-hmm. because I'd had a bad experience with network marketing. I didn't want to go there. And uh, it wasn't where I was at the time. And then when Sasha's mum got her result and he, and Sasha's background was remedial massage therapy. And he sort of said, Jules, I think people need to know about this. And so, you know, as an Olympian, I was sort of, I just thought that I need to meet the athletes that are using it. And I want to meet Virtus Norton. I want to meet the founder. I want to meet who's running this company because I'd had a bad experience with someone that was running a company before with integrity. Mm-hmm. And so we, within two weeks, we made a decision to fly to the US for convention. And uh, we met Virtus. And I'm not gonna, that's all I'm going to say because I'll cry. Um, we met people yeah. and we just walked up yeah. to them and said, what is your ASEA story? Mm. And we were looking around and we were like, we are the youngest in this room. <laughs> Everybody else was over 60. You know, this was back, you know, four years ago. And we were just looking around going, this is incredible, you know. And that was, we came back and we just went, yep, yeah, I can honestly pick up the phone to anyone and say, I'm proud to be associated with this company because their ethics are in the right place. And, um, you know, and they really care about Mm. us as people. They want us to get better. They want us to live better lives. So if therapists can, you know, just be open to looking outside the box and ask themselves, why did you become a therapist in the first place? Mm. You know, it's to help people. Yeah. And if you could help 10 times the amount of people you can help now and yeah. create a residual income and help more people by helping them get well, yeah. then why wouldn't you look at it? Absolutely. You Absolutely, know? Julie. Yeah. It's a phenomenal opportunity, isn't it, really? I mean, I it come is. from the corporate world and I totally get where that scepticism and that, that, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense unless you take the time to one, yep. get to know the founders and understand that they were corporate and they're yes. in this space because of this incredible technology that needs to get to the world. And, um, and their passion is people. And it's all about anyone that comes here, whether you're a therapist, a coach, an athlete, um, or, or, you know, a mum, a lawyer, architects, you know, there's um, farmers, everyone's here in this space. Yeah. And the company cares about every single person that comes, that you yep. um, you get what you need while you're here. It could be just a product experience uh, or it could be uh, the fact that you've got the opportunity to help them bring this to the world and create uh, a family, an income. Uh, you know, the, the, the income opportunity is endless really, isn't it? I mean, it's as much as you, you want to have. So where, where do you see yeah, yourself so- and Sasha with that? with the income side well we um you know as asia has basically saved our butt during uh this crazy time that we're experiencing at the moment um all my speaking uh was cancelled uh so i lost my income and sasha's a plasterer he's been his work has been sporadic since december mid-december last year anyway mm-hmm. um so without asia we would have been uh, you know, on, on our bones of our butt, you know, we, I don't know how we would have coped. So for us, it's saved that, saved that, you know, and it's allowed us to have the opportunity to talk to people and say, Hey, listen, you didn't think about a plan B before. Yeah. What's your plan B now? You know, do you want to have a look at this as a plan B? And so that's how we've sort of, um, we've not stressed about, um, what we're going through. It's just been an opportunity to have more conversations. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and we have the attitude that if we just give people the information and say to them, we don't care if you do or don't, yeah. I'm no longer in a situation where I, I can't dress myself. Mm-hmm. I'm no longer in a situation where, you know, I've, I've got to take every speaking gig that I can get. We are, um, you know, 
maybe you need to look at this. What's happened? How much control do you have in your life? Yes. You know, and most people are living week to week mm. and most people are, um, you know, if within four weeks they had no money, you know, I know someone that works for a superannuation um, firm and he said, they're getting calls from people saying, can I please take my super out? And he's gone, yes, let me look it up. And they've got $300 worth of super in there. And they said, we really need it. He goes, yes, of course you can have it. Mm. You know, so it gives people an option. And I think that, you know, if this was a washing powder business or a shake business, I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. You know, um, this is actually changing people's lives. And when we get phone calls, when people say, thank you, yeah. you know, or they they come over excited, they can't wait to share. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? You won't believe it. Yeah. Oh, you will believe it. But you guess yeah. what? You won't believe it. No. Um, that gives me goosebumps, right? I've got goosebumps I because I can think of so many stories, right? Absolutely. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. Mm. I'm just, I'm just a, a person that wants to help people. And if I can get this gel on three on someone and use it three times in five minutes, I know nine out of 10 people will feel a reduction in their discomfort. And it gives them the hope that if they use this long enough, that they, they'll get the, the benefits that they want and the outcome that they want. Yeah. So it's important. We are very particular. Unless someone's going to use it for three months at least, yeah. don't waste your time. Yeah. Don't waste your money and don't waste my time. You know, we're pretty tough with people now. Initially, we, were, we'd, we signed up a lot of people. We helped a lot of people get well. We were scared of the business mm -hmm. and, uh, we, and it wasn't until probably... You know, we sort of, we've been top and rollers in the world the last few years. And it wasn't until we sort of got out of our own way and said, what are we doing? You know, we, we need to help people create an income as well, because that's how we can save people as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, once we got out of that, we just sort of say to people, look, I don't care if you do. I don't care if you don't, you know, but have a look at this, understand what it is. It may not be you that I can help. It may be someone that you know and love mm -hmm. that I can help. And that way we've not lost any friendships, yeah. you know, and uh, I think that was really important for me was that if I was going to put my name to something, it had to be credible. Yeah. And it also had to be something that, you know, I wasn't going to be that freaky network marketer that, you know, hounded people. You know, I say to people, I'm going to ring you every week and I'm going to see how you've been going. Yeah. Don't ghost me when I call you, you know, and we have a laugh about it, but it's like, I want to support you. It's important. Yeah. I support you. It's so, right. you know, and I'm pretty honest and upfront about that. Yeah. Yeah. And it truly is. It's a, it's a new technology. It's something that the world hasn't seen. It's not in a category. Of, oh. Won't be a moment. Okay. We've just muted Julie. I'm just going to need to unmute you again. Got it. Beautiful. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's just giving people the information, allowing them to make a choice and, and then having no attachment to that outcome, you yes. know, is just saying, look, do your own research. You know, if, if there's a therapist, I say, look, go for your, go your hardest on PubMed. Yes. Go your hardest, go and look at the real research. Don't Google it. Yeah. If you're going to Google it, go to Google Scholar. Or go to PubMed, go to the where the real science is. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then it's a yes or no. Exactly. You know, and you work out pretty quickly who is serious about helping others. You sure do. And I think you find it's very easy to share this once you've experienced it yourself. You understand um, what it can do for people. Yep. So that that um, hesitation that maybe you had originally uh, is gone out the window. So, look, Julie, I think... Um, yeah, absolutely you've yeah it, it's an incredible place to be and um and knowing that anyone can join and and um, be a part of this journey with us uh so if there's someone on the call today that wants to know more i just encourage you to get back in touch with the person that invited you um and i'd also like to open it up today to ask if there's anyone on there that'd like to pick julie's brains while we have her um <laughs> If there's anyone that has a question, I, I do know that there was one person that wanted to ask, but I just um, 
may need to. Un- there was uh, the question about the dosage. Yes. Okay. So for yes, dosages. Oh, hang on. Yes. Yeah, so for me, it's. Yeah. So for me, it's um. You know, I, I fluctuate between ninety and one hundred twenty mils morning and night, depending on right. how I'm feeling. Sure. If um, if I've got a lot on, then I can have another dose during the day. I'm I'm spritzing my face. I always carry a spray bottle in my handbag. I always carry a tube of gel in my handbag. So right. then during the day, if I feel like I need it, yeah. yeah. Okay. If I feel like I need it, I can just put another lot on my face, and it I just find it gives me a little bit of a pep up as well. Sure. Sure. Okay. Lovely. Um, and there was someone that was just about to speak then and ask a question. Is that you, Christine? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Thank, you. thank you for popping in. <laughs> yeah. Julie, thank you so much for your sharing today. Um, it was You're just welcome. wonderful to hear your experience because it's real. And I thank you yeah. for that. Um, I've got just two questions. One, can you talk about uh, when people start on a seer and you've started them on them and they come back and they say, oh, I feel really awful after, in, like after a week or two, and is, it, is that detoxing? So can you talk about detoxing? The other thing yeah. is um, when people get like you've got, a, there's a couple, like a husband and wife, um, and one believes and, and wants to go ahead with a seer and the other one is very... Um, Sceptical. Yes, <laughs> to say it mildly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So can you talk about those two questions, please? Sure. So um, so the first question was uh, about detox. Okay, so we will always start people off slowly. So I'll, I'll, I will mention if someone's really sick, I'll say to them, look, you may be starting off on 30 meals, you know, twice a day. Mm. Um, but most people I'll start off at 60 mils twice a day. And then on day four, I check in with them and I say, how, how are you going? But in that conversation, I say to them, look, what's going to happen is if you have any headache or, mm-hmm. um, you know, or if they've got, you know, um, uh, digestive issues and they get a bit of diarrhea or something, I say to them, look, you may experience that. That's just the body flushing out um, the toxins. You need to drink a lot of water, 45 mils per kilo of body weight a day and to flush out those toxins so i say look them it's minority it's 10 percent of people maybe might get a bit of a detox and we don't know i said but if you're concerned you've got my number pick up the phone and ask me or text me uh on day four i'll ring them and i'll say okay have you experienced better sleep have you experienced more energy and if the answer is no then i'm going to say uh, you know, did you have headaches, things like that? No, no, no. Okay. So what we're going to do is up your dose. Because right at the beginning, I talk about to them that uh, they're looking for a tipping point. So we're all different, right? We're all different ages. We've all got all different things going on. We don't know what's going on in our body. We might be using, you know, the, the gel because we've got a sore shoulder or something or and we're doing the liquid as well. But we don't know what else is happening in our body. So I really stress those um, those time frames of 10% of people will get a result in a week, 50% in a month, which means 50% of people don't think it works in a month. Mm. 75% of people get a result in two months and 95% in three. The other 5% are long-term health issues. So I'm really clear with that, that you must be prepared mentally to give it a go for at least three months, using it the way I say. I'm very clear on that, using it the way I say. Because after those four days, I'll say, now you're going to up it to 120 mils morning and night. And then, you know, and then let's check in in a week's time. But my phone's always open for you. So most detoxes are pretty minor. They might get a headache. They might, we got ulcers in our mouth and we had a bit of a, <clears throat> which didn't develop into anything, but that's what we got. Um, you know, other people, you know, just might get a bit of, you know, upset tummy or I had a lady on the weekend, you know, she had a headache uh, and she doesn't normally get headaches. And, I, and But she knew. She goes, it must be the detox. And I went, yeah, you might be having a detox. Congratulations. We're getting rid of something. <laughs> um, so, you know, I don't look at it as a bad thing. It's a good thing, right? So, um, and then 
Uh, so what was part B of that question? The oh the hus oh yes yes the, the husband or the wife is not the, happy. The, <laughs> the wife is or the wife is not happy. So it's it's common about this, and they go home very excited. Hey, guess what? We're going to do this thing, and 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 he's like, "What is it? I don't know, but it's you know." I'm going to drink it. I'm going to rub this stuff on my face and, and we're going to share it. And the husband or the wife's going, you've lost your mind. And I'm not any, I'm not part of it. Right. Because when you try and force something on someone, they're going to repel back. So if we'll try, if someone wants to build the, build the business, we will talk to them, both their parent, both partners, and we ask them their questions and their concerns. What is your concern? What do you know about network marketing? What experience have you had with network marketing? And when you ask people questions, it allows them to give you the answers and their concerns. So if my, so my advice for people is not to rush home and go to the partner, we're going to do this, it's going to be better. We're going to, mil we're going to earn a million dollars, right? <laughs> Don't do that. Just, just say, look, I experienced this. Um, you know, I've had this issue for a long time. I rubbed the gel on three times in five minutes. I, I felt a reduction in my discomfort and I'm pretty excited. I'm going to give it a go, you know, and when, and talk from the heart, why are you doing it? You know, if, if you sat down with your partner and said, this is, I, I think we should give this a go. Just like Sasha, I was a no. And Sasha goes, I think we need to share this with people. And we, it took us a little while to get over our whole fact that it was network marketing. You know, I really struggled with that for a while and we didn't tell a lot of people. We, we would find strangers to tell and we would tell them because it wouldn't matter if we didn't see them again, right? And they would get better and they wouldn't, they wouldn't share. They were better. They didn't care. They, they weren't that person to share. So that's how we became top and rollers because we helped a lot of people get well, but we wouldn't talk about the business until we sort of sat ourselves down, looked at ourselves, did some personal development <laughs> around <laughs> why we wouldn't share. And for us, it's really important to know that person and what is their concern. You know, I signed up an accountant yesterday and I said to him, you can become a customer or if you want to share it, you can become an associate. I said, you know, what do you know about network marketing? What's your experience? And they'll tell you. So for me, you've got two ears, one mouth, you know, and everybody's different with the way they receive information. So by getting to know how someone feels, what, they, what their experience is, then you can address the concern and say, okay, I'm really passionate about this. I think this can help a lot of people. I would love it if you are going to be on board. So maybe you need to try it as well and tell me what your experience is. You know, okay. suggest, mm -hmm. don't force. And then, you know, if they're still struggling, if, they, if they're really anti, it's just because you haven't asked enough questions. What's really the cause of that angst? Is it because you're doing something? you know, or because they don't feel that they could do it. You know, it's, it's important to ask the questions. And then if you need help, you know, you guys have got incredible mentors in your team that have come from all walks of life. It's finding that person that that person's going to be able to relate to mm -hmm. and saying, hey, do you mind if you have a chat to this person? They may be able to answer your concerns. Right. Thank you. Does that Thank make you, sense? Yes, it does. Yes. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Uh, okay. Can I? Can I? Can I ask a question? Yes. Hey. Hi, Julie. I'm 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 Yen from Singapore, and I'm really impressed. Uh, I mean, I'm also an active user of ASEA. So uh, I have one friend who is, you know, as per usual, you know, skeptical about this product. And he asked a question, if I'm not sure you, you have encountered or so. He was asking, how can you accept the taste of a seer like that? 
can I see a change to strawberry flavor, chocolate flavor, and like how we take our protein shake. So have I encountered this question before? And I have really struggling to convince him the difference of, you know, it's, it's not protein shake and uh, it's something very special about CL. I, I got I got difficulty convincing him. So how can yeah. you help me about this? So again, um, uh, basically when we first tried the liquid, I was excited. I was like, yeah. I rang yeah. Sally and I said, guess what? The liquid's arrived. And we took our first squeeze <laughs> and I just thought, oh, I was mortified. I was like, it tastes like pool water. So I rang Sally and I said, it tastes I like swimming, swimming, swimming pool water. Pool. I said, I've been exactly. this for 20 years. It's done nothing for me. You know, why does it taste like this? So she said to me, the worse it tastes, the more you need it. Right? So I said, okay. <laughs> so now I, I'm, I'm quite, I say to people, what do you taste? When you drink it, what do you taste? Because four out of 10 people will taste a slight salty taste. Six out of 10 will taste like a pool water taste. And then there's a remote, the, the off chance that like Sasha, my partner, he tastes um, hydrogen peroxide. Right? He tastes like a, a cleaning, cleaning taste, right? And I'm like, mm. you're weird. But it just depends on where our body is in homeostasis because that's the whole idea of the redox is it takes our body back into homeostasis. So I just sort of, you know, I would not try and convince him. I would say to him, what do you taste? And, 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 then I, and I'd say to him, you know, some people taste a slight salty taste, some people pool water, but the worse it tastes, the more you need it. And because now I can't taste anything when I drink my ASEA. But I know, and I had a tummy bug about six months ago. I woke up on the Saturday. I didn't feel well. I drank my ASEA. I thought I was drinking poison. And I said to Sasha, can you please taste this? And he's like, it's normal. And I said, I taste like I'm drinking Roundup or, you know, some kind of poison. It was incredible. As soon as I felt better on the Tuesday, it went back to the normal taste. So I would just say to him, everybody experiences different taste. And, and if, you know, maybe he might just start off with the gel. Because in Australia, we only had the gel for the first 18 months. And America couldn't believe the results we were getting with just the gel. So what, what is his issue? What is his, why is he using it? myself oh yeah we we are we were doing um outrigo canoeing in singapore and i wanted to yep. bring this product back to singapore and um he he told me that uh his back experience in swimming that his father threw him into the water and he was near drown and uh, since young until now he doesn't want to swim at the moment i gave him a seal and he just spit it out and said how can i be paying you know two hundred dollar for 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 something that's so Korean and he rejects it so I say he said can I feedback back to us here that you know make it strawberry flavor uh, orange flavor yeah. and he will take it and I said all right let me raise this question and uh and uh, I think today is a good chance that I hear so I, I wanted to know how to how to answer that how to how to assure him or convince him that it's not something that you add some flavor or whatsoever whatsoever how can you help me on that so so ASEA did bring out a flavor for a little while that you could add to ASEA but they stopped making it it was a grape flavor which is typical America make everything grape flavored um, <laughs> but it was to help kids that were on the spectrum you know probably accept the taste better um, I would just say to him that it's not flavored to protect the pure, um, the pure molecules, you know, because if we start adding flavors in and things like that, it's not a hundred percent native then is it? Because we don't have chocolate flavoring in our cells. We've got these redox molecules and I would just stress to him, I could, and I would connect him with maybe someone in, in your team that's your upline to say, you know, um, can you talk to him? 
and explain why we have to have it at its purest form. And, you know, and, and I would just, what I would do with him was like, next time you're going training, I would, I'd rub the gel over his shoulders and arms and say, hey, do your workout and tell me how, you know, and then rub it on again after he's worked out and say, how's your recovery with that? Are you sore? You know, and it, once he gets that, that belief in that way, and, and then understanding that we need to have this at this purest form so the body can accept it um, as quickly as possible. And then that may help him go, oh, okay. Julie, that helps. along those lines there where you said thank about... Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Yan. Thanks, thanks Yan. Yeah. Yeah, there's a question in the chat box there about, can you just address it being native to the body, that it's made by the cells? Um, so if you could, we, we're, we're getting towards the end of our time. We only have a couple of minutes left. But if you don't mind answering that question, Julie. Yeah, sure. So um, these redox molecules, uh, are, for people that don't know much about the way our cells work, in our cells we have an energy plant. That energy plant creates these redox molecules. What they've done is replicate that process of that energy plant and taken the, um, the purest uh, water and salt and created a saline solution. And then they've put that gentle electrolysis to replicate that energy plant. And over three days, they create these redox molecules. That is why when we drink the molecules, it's best to swish it in our mouth for 30 to 60 seconds because most of the molecules be absorbed into your mouth. Then your body, and, and Dr. Gary Samuelson, the medical atomic physicist that stabilise these molecules, he says that these have like a, their own little intelligence. So we can drink the liquid, swirl it in our mouth, and our body knows exactly what it is. It doesn't have to go, oh, what is this? How do I use it? It knows exactly. And that's why we can get such quick results with rubbing the gel on three times in five minutes. Uh, because the body knows and takes it where it needs it to go. So that's why it's 100% safe for athletes because they're just topping up their own redox levels. It's like topping up your own water levels. Uh, it's like topping up your own iron levels, you know, except these are native, you know, iron synthetic. Um, you know, iron tablets you're taking are synthetic. The body's got to work out what is that, how do I use that, how do I process it. The redox is, um, you know, I had uh, a lady who was purely looking for an anti-aging benefit, rubbing the gel on her neck. Two months later, she rang me and she said, Julie, this, I'm not sure if this is related, but I used to have a leaky bladder issue. I no longer have that leaky bladder issue. The molecules get in the carotid artery and travel to where they're needed to go before they're going to resolve anything else. That's why it's important for us to set realistic expectations with people that the body will use the molecules where it believes it's more important. If we've got something sinister going on, the molecules are going to be used there first. So it may take our shoulder a bit longer to recover. Yeah. So that's why it's a hundred percent safe for athletes because they can't overdose on it. Right. Um, there's no toxicity. There's no side effects and, you know, and it, it's helping them just be their best. They can be using the, the best molecules that they can. Absolutely. Great. That was wonderful, Julie. We have learned so much from you today. <laughs> and uh, You're welcome. Appreciate you spending even a little bit longer than we would normally do with us. So, uh, look, I, would, I think we need to wrap it up. Um, I don't think there's any other questions in there, but you're just, yeah, so we just really, really appreciate you, Julie. So anyone that... Um, My pleasure anyone that wants and you're to happy i'm um, happy if, yeah uh cbl i'm not sure who that is um but you're welcome to quote me that's not a problem you can go in <laughs> <laughs> antibacterial antifungal antiviral absolutely yes and if you want to see papers and studies on those then yeah get in touch with the person who invited you and we'll be able to certainly provide all of those that information so again, thank you very, very much, Julie. Uh, you're wonderful. Pleasure. Great getting to know you and your story a little bit further again. And uh, look, everyone, we hope you have a wonderful weekend.
and um, look forward to getting together next Friday with you when Christina is back. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Julie. Have a Thank great you, day, Julie. everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.